Welcome to Conversations with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Abastilla, counselor here at Chimicum Junior Senior High. Hello and welcome to another edition of Conversations with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Abastilla. So for this week, it is my pleasure uh, to do this interview with Miss uh, Taya Hall, our 7th, uh, 8th grade math teacher as well as geometry teacher. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Hall, for being here. No problem. Glad to have you on board. So um, to start off with, a um, little bit about your background. Um, it's my understanding that um, you used to be a student here and that you've had uh, family and ge- generations have been here. Can you kind of fill me in on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I did graduate from here. On I have four siblings that all graduated from here as well. Um, and so we're all varying ages, but um, and we all start with T, so we were all T Coltons. So if you find Coltons, that's probably somebody related to me. Um, uh, I used to live across the street, so I used to walk to school every day. And um, yeah, went to University of Washington and uh, um, made my way back here to teach. Awesome. So. Um, so how was uh, how was it like your experience as a student here? Yeah, I mean, the campus looks about the same. There used to be, like, a cool, um, like, pit. We called it the senior pit. Um, right, oh, sorry. Right out by the, um, in the commons, and all, only seniors were allowed to be in there. It had, like, a cool couch. And yeah. But a couple of years ago, they filled that in, and I'm not sure why. I think it became, like, a click thing. The pit. I'm just yeah. trying to imagine. So what type of couch did they have? Leather couch? Oh, or? no, it was, like, red, and it was, like, microfiber. But it used to, like, the commons would dip down in the corner and then down in the dip there was a like a cool place where all the seniors could hang out <laughs> just out of curiosity um, did you guys do any pranks on each other because oh, I, sure. I, I can i can already envision okay. with the dipping down that uh, what did you guys do like did you, i'm curious oh yeah just pranks? like pretending to like hold somebody over so they fell off or, oh, like, no. yeah I, I mean it wasn't that big of a dip but it was enough that like if you tripped on it it would really hurt like so that's probably why they got rid of it. Oh, um, how did how was the experience for your siblings? I mean, you had a few siblings that went here as well. Yeah, yeah. So I have three okay. older brothers that all graduated from here. Um, they were all uh, basketball and track um, players. I think one of the records my brother Tanner still holds. I think it's assists for basketball. I'm not quite sure, but um, yeah, they they all. Uh, tra- my oldest brother Travis is um, works for Amazon. He's a big um, micro market marketing director. Um, it actually like had a meeting with Jeff Bezos the other day, just like no in kidding. his office. Yeah, so he spends a lot of time like with him and like traveling around the world. Like he's going to Tokyo in a couple months to like do stuff for Amazon over there. And uh, my brother Tyler is a big sales director um, for a company in Europe. Wow! And he's, and he's based in Seattle. They live in Woodinville, but um, he does the sales for them. And what does my, he sell? Oh, some um, software. Um, yeah, he does a lot of stuff with the federal government. But and then my brother Tanner um, runs nonprofit organizations that do a lot of outreach to like Africa, South America, and I actually think they're in New Zealand right now. So, wow! So they're having a great time. And then I, younger sister who also graduated from here, uh, she's a graphic designer. Okay. So, yeah. So we all have a big, rich history. A lot of diversity. Know. Did you yeah, just come in the background? Which is a whole oh, variety yeah. of things. Yeah. And I'm curious uh, for yourself, uh, what inspired you to become a teacher? I think um, having. Um, great teachers here at Chimicum really made a big difference. Um, I, I always really loved math, and it was something, like, everybody hated. And I, I, for some reason, I found joy in, like, finding an answer always. Like, there's always an answer. Even though there's, like, lots of ways to figure it out, I think, like, the the joy of getting that answer, I think, is what really inspired me to, like, try to spread that joy to other people. Um, when you ask adults what their favorite subject was, like, math is never their favorite subject ever. And I think it comes a lot from like their poor experiences in school. And so I'm just trying to like change the vibe a little bit and, you know, bring a fresh approach to it. So did you, um, so when you were a student here, who were some of the teachers that, uh, that were great? Oh, well, Ms. Schmidt was my high school math teacher. She's still here. And then Mr. Porter, who is still lurking around, he was the athletic director and vice principal when I was a kid. And, um, and then, uh, Mr. Meacham, who's in the elementary school, Miss Berg, they were here, and a couple other people. But for the high school, it's pretty close to being nobody left. So yeah, that's fun. Wow. Now you mentioned uh, so your credentials. So did you get your uh, T 
teaching credentials from UW? No, or? I have a math degree from UW. Okay. Uh, and then I have uh, two master's degrees, one in education and one in teaching. Oh, wow. Uh, were they all from UW or was it different schools? No, different schools. Different schools? Uh, which ones? Um, my first one was from um, Kaplan University, and then the next one was from University of Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, so I have just a big background of knowledge. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm really curious uh, for yourself as a teacher, um, what are what are some of the joys that you face, and what are some of the uh, challenges and obstacles that you go through on a daily basis? I think the biggest joy for me is seeing students who have poor experiences in math in their previous years, like, come in and not just totally hate their life in my classroom. And I try really hard to have them have, like, a little bit of success every day, um, whether that's, like, finishing an assignment or understanding a concept or just something that they walk out not feeling totally defeated. I think that's one of my biggest joys. And then uh, some of the difficult, like, things are, are sometimes students forgetting that, like, teachers are still people and that we have you know, personal feelings and personal things going on that affect and not that we should like lay our personal problems on them, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm still a human. And I think that's sometimes overlooked, but, um, also getting up really early, that's difficult. Um, but I think at this point I've gotten used to it. <laughs> um, I don't remember it being this early when I was a kid. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, oh, so how long have you been a teacher for several? Oh, uh, this is my, four? fourth year fourth here, year okay or fifth i like i kind of had a weird half year but it's my seventh year teaching altogether okay um one year a student was it was the time a little bit different did you guys I, start on, i'm honestly thinking that it was like 8 30 but oh I wow don't, i don't know i was a big difference um, 45 minutes is a little bit of a difference so we started 7 45 8 yeah I, uh, but maybe it's just harder to get up because i'm older so it could be that's really it um, now, I think you kind of answered my question. I was going to ask my next one about your philosophy on education and uh, student learning. Um, what, what's your biggest philosophy? Just your biggest thing? Oh, that's such a hard question. I feel like I want like a, like a list of 20 philosophies and I could like pick one that best represents me. How, how about two or three? But, but, well, I don't know. I mean, I think that every person, especially in math, can be successful. I, I, I think people often say that like, I'm not a math person. I was like, not everybody is, and that's okay, but that doesn't mean that we can't all be successful, right, just to get where you want to go. Like, not all of us are going to go to UW and get a math degree or be an engineer, but, like, getting your way through high school with relative success and not dreading every minute of it, I think, is, is important. Um, and I, I, like, I try to make my, my classroom, like, inviting, and so I think that's another philosophy of mine is, like, having a place where students feel comfortable and then just... Um, accountability. I, I try to hold my students accountable for all those things that they do, um, whether it's like losing their papers or anything. I'm like, okay, you have to like come and you know do it again. And so, yeah, I want I want the students to walk out of my classroom being more accountable than they were before. So, yeah. I'm sure, no, I'm sure. I've talked to a few students. I can definitely tell you that they definitely appreciate you oh, uh, without even question. I'll, I'll address <laughs> that later on too. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. For me, I started here in August. Uh, I'm from Bremerton. I live in Bremerton. So I'm, I still feel like I'm relatively new here to the yeah. Timicum community. Uh, what What would you tell uh, – I don't really feel like an outsider anymore, <laughs> but how would you – A new person. Yeah, what would you tell a new person or, okay, even an outsider, say, oh, yeah. uh, what would you tell them about the Chimicum community in general, the high school and just the community? I think for – the community, the it's really close niche and and um, like agricultural base. We have like take great pride in 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 um, living off the land. I think with big dairy farms and big um, vegetable farms, and you know between like Red Dog and everything that goes on in between here and the bridge, I think is really diverse. Um, uh, and then for the high school, I think that we are starting to gain. Um, a good reputation after so many years of I think having a terrible reputation and and I it was after me that that reputation really started to like not me personally but after like my graduating class I think a couple years that I'm not sure what caused that reputation but I want people to understand that like this is a good place full of really good people and teachers that care and that we're doing what we think is best for everybody and I think and sometimes we get so hot-headed about whatever topics and 
but this is a great place. Like, there's lots of opportunities, and there's more opportunities than ever, even from when I was a kid. You know, the sports being combined with Port Townsend is an awesome opportunity for us to, like, offer tons of new sports and, like, you know, be competitive. And I think it's great. Now, for the um, outside listeners, those who um, aren't from the Chimicum area, um, could you briefly enlighten what you talked about with um, our school, Chimicum, and uh, combined with Port Townsend? Just, oh, just, yeah. just for outside listeners. Can you yeah. explain what uh, that is? So our school district, Chimicum, and then about 12 minutes up the road is another school district, Port Townsend School District. And um, just recently we've um, combined – um, sports programs. A lot of our sports programs, per, bleh, a lot of our sports programs were already combined. Like I coached tennis, and that was that's been combined since I was a kid. Wrestling was combined, but now we put like football, basketball, baseball, all of it's put together. So the teams have more, you know, have more people. So it's good. Good, good. Um, so I'm just want to go back a little bit um, about teaching, teaching style. How? So you've been a teacher for seven years. How did you develop your teaching style? over those last I, seven years? I think every every teacher has pulls a little bit of all of the teachers that came before them and who taught them. You know, like, a, like oh, I like this about this person and this about this person. You kind of just mold it into, like, who you are. I think mine, a lot of mine comes from, like, me just not taking people's nonsense. And I think that I give a sense of, like, I care about you, but also, like, I want you to be responsible. And so sometimes I come off as, like, really rough in that instance. Um, but I think that um, it's style is such a hard. I don't. I so I so it's funny because uh, one of the paras who's going to um, school to get her bachelor's degree just asked me this question yesterday, and I had a really hard time answering it then too about style. I, I mean, if I had to like put a word, I'd be like uh, knowledgeable, fun. Like mm-hmm. I think that's probably where I would go, or like fun with math or. I, I had a um, friend at the ESD that she would she called my class uh, making friends with math. I think that's the best way to describe me. And one thing I've when I've talked with students and they've mentioned this why they really appreciate how you make the math curriculum fun. Yeah. And they, they've said that too more than one. I can tell you several where they've said where uh, sometimes they uh, you made the task so fun. It's like oh. They didn't realize they're doing math till yeah. later. It's like, oh, they're learning things, yeah, yeah. and so that was actually a question from some of the students because mm. they, they were curious and like, oh, how did she, how did uh, Miss Hall develop that teaching style over the years? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, one thing is one that you're definitely making an impact That's with good. students, and they really do appreciate what you do. Um, I'm curious. I know we talked about uh, teachers that you knew when mm-hmm. you were a student here. Um, were there um, anyone that, uh, growing up, even up to now, that you looked up to, role models or mentors or people that you that really helped you along the way? Yeah, I like when I first started teaching um, in Oregon. Is where I first started teaching, and I had um, we were assigned a mentor teacher mm-hmm. that like guided us through our first year. Um, her name was Ruth Ann, and she she was like. I would go in and just say, here's my X, Y, Z problems, and she would have ABC solutions for me. And so it was just, just like, she she really inspired me to, like, you know, most teachers quit in their first five years, right? Why is that? Yeah. It's hard. Like, hmm. it's time-consuming. It's hard. If you have a family, you're you're spending a lot of time away from them. You know what I mean? I have a little, I have a little boy who's six who's just finally, like, doing all the fun things, like playing sports, and he does gymnastics, and I, I miss things sometimes just because I – I don't know. And part of it is me like being new and I still haven't like gotten the rhythm of doing all the things I think. But um, I think that uh, she was a really good inspiration. And, and then, and then Joanne who's here, she was my high school teacher. She was one of the big people that um, I did running start in high school. And mm-hmm. so I spent a lot of time um, during the day, not going to classes because all my classes were later in the afternoon. And so she let me be a TA for her for like three years and so I would TA, you know, all my friends. And it was really weird to be the TA for my friends. But it, it let me see that, like, teaching was a noble profession. And I think I, that that was a big influence for me. And then just, you know, awesome college teachers and, you know, nice people. You mentioned something about uh, Running Start. So yeah. you, you did a little bit of Running Start in high school. How was that experience like? Or can, can you tell me Yeah, I, Running Start was still kind of new when I was in high school. And um, a lot of students um, participated in Running Start, but just pieces of Running Start they would do, like, just English, or they would get five or ten credits. I, I, somebody once told me that they thought that I was the first person to graduate with an AA from Chimica, but I don't think that's true. I think we'd have to fact check that. 
Okay. But I did I did graduate with an AA from from Peninsula when I graduated high school. And so I started at UW, 18 years old, but a junior. And How was that like? I'm oh, curious, as an 18 year old going to UW, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, can you describe a little bit of how? Oh, it was so weird to be a junior and a freshman at the same time. Uh-huh. Right? So like I would I was living in the freshman dorms because they make you live in the dorms the first year. Okay. And so and we were grouped with like like people. So like I at the time I was doing computer engineering and so I was on the floor with all the computer engineers, boys and girls. Like we were living in the same hallway. And so, um, but also I didn't have any classes with anybody because they were all taking their prerequisites and I was already done with everything. And so I started like in math 410 or something like that, right? Wow. Because I took all those credits with me and I took the AP test in high school. So I I took those credits with me. And so, yeah, it was very strange. So it it was really lonely to start with because all the people that were going, that were living with me, they were all going to classes together and making those friendships where I wasn't. So that was really challenging. I think probably one of the biggest downsides of what I did was that I didn't, I didn't get to form those bonds with those freshman friends that I had. Though, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. It worked out, obviously, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, but it just was really hard because I didn't get to enjoy the same things they were enjoying. But so it was, yeah, so I was freshman slash junior. It was really weird. That had to be interesting. It's very, yeah. Very I, interesting experience. It, it's something that is not talked about. So that's, it's something for people who are currently doing Reading Start to think about, like, that if you're, if you're, if your ambition is to get an AA and you're going to go and you're not going to know anybody because you're not going to get that chance to, like, bond with people. So really weird because usually and you know by the time you're junior in college you like have some friends or you get an apartment together or things like that i I never got that chance i was 20 and i was gone it's a fast jump yep (laughs) definitely a fast jump for sure yeah okay um so this one let's have some fun this is called uh word association so i'm just gonna basically give you like a word or two okay and um just tell me like your immediate thoughts okay comes to mind now now this first one, this is a running joke. Um, the students here in Chimicum, they know um, <laughs> I have a uh, dis- oh, I, I, I have a dislike for pickles. pickles yeah. So I'm gonna shoot that for the first thing. Is, okay, first I'm gonna come to mind with pickles. Vinegar. Okay. Uh, okay. Cartoons. Uh, Cartoon Network. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, education. Teaching. Teaching. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, math. Fun. Okay. Video games. Uh, Zelda. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's a good one. I'm a Super Mario guy, but yeah, Zelda's oh, good too. Oh, it's Zelda's good. good. Okay, uh, puzzles. Annoying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, student learning. Student learning. Oh, that's two words. Yeah. What uh, are two words? Uh, data. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, discipline. Sucky. <laughs> uh, sports, football. Okay. I love football. Okay. Social media. Uh, necessary evil. <laughs> okay. All right. I got a few more questions here. Um, so uh, we are in March, so we got a few more months of the school year. Um, advice for the students. So, first of all, um, what piece of advice would you give to the seventh and eighth graders for starters? I think the seventh and eighth graders are learning habits that they're going to take them all the way through high school. And I think that they don't always understand that. And those organization habits, those follow through habits, so needed now. And then, you know, when you get to high school, it's a lot easier. So, Bills over time. And then that's the next one, the high school. So I would say the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. What would you tell them? (laughs) Um, it's really easy to, or it's extremely difficult to raise your grade after you get an F, right? And so, like, just don't ever get there. Just don't. Just don't do that. Makes my job harder because uh, I check the <laughs> credits. They <laughs> forgive it. Yeah. So. And then here's the big one, the seniors. What would you tell the seniors? Um, don't do something stupid on graduation night. Yeah, yeah. that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I, I think that might be a yeah, good stage Yeah, because I... Yeah, there's a story of, I don't think he graduated with me, but he had a scholarship to school to play baseball. He did something stupid at graduation night. They took it from him. Oh, no. Yeah. And so just, like, it's a good time. Like, go seniors. Go graduate. You're awesome. But 
that's just one night and you got the rest of your life in front of you. So that's fair. So yeah, that's fair. Uh, so in closing, um, anything, any final words you want to tell um, the students, uh, community staff, anything, uh, a message you want to send them directly? Uh, I, I, my biggest joy is is helping, and so. I think for the students, like if you're struggling and whatever, and and I'm a person that you're comfortable with, and I don't just come see me and I'll help. I think um, semester was really challenging, and people were kind of freaking out about their grades, and 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 I definitely offered to every single kid, like come see me and I'll help you with whatever you help with, and 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 I want to extend that to now. So just if you need some help with whatever, I'm happy to help. And then for everybody else. I know Chimicum is small, but that doesn't mean that we're not awesome. So take, um, maybe let go of some preconceived notions that you might have or what people might say and give us a chance. So um, I can tell you this just from my own experience because, like I said, I started back August last summer. And, I mean, my first impressions was awesome. Um, you guys, yourself, you've made me feel welcome. The students have made me feel welcome, and I mean that. Yeah. I mean, whatever preconceived notions, it's there, it's happened in the past, but for yeah. me, it's been awesome, and I, you've made me feel welcome, too, and I really appreciate that. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Hall, for yeah. being a part of this week's show. I, I really good. appreciate it. Thank you. And this concludes this portion of Conversations with Mr. A, Episode 3B, with Ms. Taya Hall our 7th, 8th grade match teacher, and our geometry teacher. Wow, wow, wow. Awesome interview. Just so much history. Being a student at Chimicum, growing up there, growing up here, um, as well as teaching here. All I can say is, students, uh, you're truly lucky to have what an awesome, wonderful teacher in Mrs. Hall. So, next week, there will be new episodes of Conversation with Mr. A. We'll see you then.